Y'all, these bones are the biggest bones I've ever seen in my four years of doing this assignment. Whatever, whatever I would ate this, they had a big appetite that day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my classroom. We have an exciting lab today that I have planned for the students. And today's lab is called the Owl Pellet Lab. Excuse me if I look slightly sleepy today, but the school year is in full effect. I am tired. I'm going to sleep every night, like around nine o'clock. Normally my body does not shut down at night until about 12 or one o'clock. Just got in the building. The bell's about to ring in about three to four minutes. So I want to show you all my setup real quick. And then we'll dive into what the lab is really about. Every single table, I have a dissection kit as well as an anatomy chart for the owl pellet. And this anatomy chart is pretty much going to help the kids, the students, identify what their owl ate. And then what we're going to need is an owl pellet lab. Now we have to differentiate this lab because I have some really high level students. So this is my high level student lab and this is my general biology our pellet lab. Only difference between the two is this one has a lot of math involved and we need to make sure that we can challenge the higher level students. Owls, when they eat, they cannot digest the bones. Their body regurgitates like a hairball. They're gonna be given the hairball that the owl spits out and they're gonna have to break it apart and they're gonna try to put the anatomy together so they can identify if their owl ate a rodent, a shrew, a mole, or a small bird. And since we are dealing with foreign objects, we need to make sure that we have on gloves today. Also going to need a bag of owl pellets. The bell's about to ring and then once the bell rings and I'm on my planning block, I'm gonna show you some of the results that we got in class today. And if you are a science teacher and you are interested in doing this lab because you're a life science teacher or a biology teacher, I can tell you where we order our supplies. So you can make your own order and you can do this with your students. Or if you're just a really dope parent and you think your child would be interested in doing this, you get this shipped to the house and you all can do, do this with your kids. I know it may sound weird. It is slightly weird, but weird things are really cool in science and we're gonna have fun today. Lab was a success. The students did a really good job cleaning up their owl pellets. One group was really, really, really good. So I kept this so I could show you all what it looks like. So if you look at this, out of all my years teaching, I've never seen a skull still intact. And just as a comparison, this is what most skulls look like. You see how the, the cranial system is all broken here and the same as this one. Cool thing about owl pellets. Owls normally throw these up maybe every six hours of the day and they can throw up anywhere between, I believe, three to four within a given time. And for this one in particular, this owl pellet was regurgitated with four skulls. So in the comment section, I want you all to guess what animal do you think this skull belongs to? We have a rodent, a shrew, a small bird, and a mole as your option choices. And then you have some other bones like the femur, radius, hind limbs, every single thing that you have on here, they can use. So if you look at this skull a little bit closer and we turn it to the side, you should see that this is a rodent. And you can easily identify that it's a rodent because of looking at the front teeth. See how the teeth are too long here, so it's not a shrew. The mole maybe, but the teeth don't ideally match up to whereas it does here for the rodent. So this group in particular had four rodents. Engagement in a classroom, doesn't matter if it's science, doesn't matter if it's English, doesn't matter if it's history, art, PE, 
you always want to make sure that your classroom is engaging. You want to get your classroom to a point where the students are doing majority of the talking. Students are doing majority of the work to where students are self-dependent of themselves to where they are not dependent of the teacher. The more engaging that you are as a teacher, the more fun students have, the more they're willing to learn and be receptive of what you're trying to teach them. If you're talking to them all day just about notes and information and you're not getting feedback from them, class is gonna be boring. I remember last year I had a teacher come from another school because my old mentor teacher is over the science department at his school and she sent him to my school to observe me teach and I wanted to get feedback from him to see what he thought about my class. He said your class compared to the others are very engaging. Kids, you know, raising their hands, trying to help me answer a question. My kids during the lesson were participating a lot. They were bringing up current events that were related to the information. They were really intrigued with what I was teaching them for the day. And it just goes to show that as a teacher, you can make anything fun. You can make anything engaging. Don't let your classroom feel like school. Once your classroom feels like school, the whole mood of the class just drops, it decreases, and it becomes boring. So don't allow your class to be boring. It may take some work to spice up the lesson that you're trying to teach, but trust me, it's going to be worth it, and the kids are really going to appreciate you for putting in the work. Even if they don't say they appreciate you for putting in the work, trust me, they do. And how do they say it without saying it? Laughing and engaging with you, having fun learning in your class. But that was the bell. About to go ahead and get ready for these labs for the next class. And I'll pick you all up once I go get some lunch. Y'all, these bones are the biggest bones I've ever seen in my four years of doing this assignment. Whatever, whatever hour ate this, they had a big appetite that day. These are the biggest bones I've ever seen in my life. But let's go ahead and grab some lunch, y'all. The importance of labs is to make sure that you keep your students' minds engaged. You can't have a class as a science class and you're taking notes every single day. That gets boring really, really, really quick. You wanna make education not feel like school. Education should be active. Students should be active in their learning. And when you just take notes every single day, that does not get the job done. So when you have the opportunity as a science teacher, try to do a lab with your students at least once a week to where they can come into class and they can look forward to the lab. Because as a student, and even when I was a student, I always, I always asked, when would I need this in life? As a teacher, they shouldn't even have to ask that question because if, you te if you're teaching something, you need to show them this is why you need this in life. My classroom, my students are never gonna ask me that because I'm always gonna show them the relevance behind what we're learning and what's actually happening in life every single day. I try to increase awareness in my science class every single day. So to where they know the importance of the subject that we are learning. I really hope that you all enjoyed this video. Again, all my science teachers, make sure you do labs for all of our subscribers who clicked on this video or if you came across this video. If you would like to see Jamila and I do more science labs in the classroom, please let us know. We're just trying to inspire teachers, give teachers ideas, but if you're just a subscriber, you're not an educator, and you find these videos exciting and entertaining and educational, please let us know. We have topics that can last us between now all the way to May, and we'll never mind taking you all inside of our lab rooms. So thank you all so much for watching. We're gonna go ahead and go back to the school. I appreciate you all for watching. See y'all next time. Peace. Next time on Jamila and my son. What we want to talk to you guys about today is basically how to save money. Now we've gotten very serious about saving money recently and we it has really helped. It has really been beneficial. Even though she blocked us, honey, we supported her. That's we some stand-up people. And the only reason why I got blocked is because I was like, shoot, she gonna block Jamila, she gonna block me. <laughs>